this is like my advice here we go <laughs> okay now how do you deal with inferiority as a christian bro jania you didn't even have to do that um when was your first kiss are you really 411 i don't know what's the worst date you've ever been on so to be honest Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jania, not Janaya. Today I'm gonna be answering you guys' questions. I asked you guys these questions on Instagram back in mid-February and now it's June. Look at my shirt, it's one of my favorites. It has Galatians 5 verses 22 through 23. And it just talks about the fruit of the spirit and like the characteristics of Christ. First question is, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. I feel blessed for all these opportunities that God's been giving me. What are your favorite colors? I really love green. Green just looks really good with my skin. And I really love black. What is something God is teaching you currently? Right now he's teaching me, it's okay for you to not be perfect. And right now it's in his plan for us to not be perfect. If we were perfect, then we wouldn't need God. And God's a perfect God. I learned last year that the pursuit for perfection will definitely leave you empty handed. There's just really no need because he is perfect and we need him. We need to make him not only our savior, but our Lord. He's the one that does the saving. He's the one that's supposed to be Lord. If we're just focusing on being perfect and not realizing that it's okay to not have everything together, then it strips away Jesus's role as like interceding on our behalf or us really needing him or him dying for our sins or forgiving us from our sins or us even repenting or even him bridging the gap between god and man and serving the role as a mediator your craziest childhood memory i don't even know i don't really remember what's a crazy childhood memory but i do have some childhood memories that are very like memorable and i guess astonishing or shocking if you're gonna talk about christian content what are your thoughts on what is modest dressing this is really important because a lot of people don't know what modesty is and what modest dressing is i think a modest dressing is just anything that's just going to draw so much attention to yourself modest dressing it's not always you covering every single part of your skin it just depends on how you're wearing your thing it has a lot to do with just humbling yourself and not trying to glorifying yourself and pleasing your flesh bring about lust or try to seek attention it doesn't only apply to women it applies to men um those are my opinions on modest dressing when it comes to men and women please tell me what you think modest dressing is in the comment section down below how do you deal with inferiority as a christian i don't see myself as inferior i think when i was very insecure in myself i would always compare myself to others and i think social media has a lot to do with that and who you surround yourself with i don't see myself as inferior because i know that i'm fearfully and wonderfully made and the king of kings Lord of Lords, the perfect one, the righteous one, he sees me and is like, wow, you were worth dying for and you're still worth dying for. I will always unconditionally love you. I have grace towards you. I have mercy, love, joy, peace, and kindness when it comes to you. There's no such thing as somebody being more superior or inferior than somebody else. We're all just fearfully and wonderfully made. Just practice positive biblical affirmations for yourself, whether it is looking in the mirror, and telling yourself that you're fearfully and wonderfully made or unfollowing the people that you find yourself comparing yourself to. Don't surround yourself with people that you feel less than. Be around people who celebrate you. Don't be around people who tolerate you. You're awesome and you're amazing. There's only one you. You weren't made to do what such and such does and such and such wasn't made to do what you do. We're all unique and we're, we're all different and you are the light and you're the salt preserving the purity in the world and just try to remember that. What is a random fact you know? I think you could get a unicorn license in Michigan. How do you find a balance in your day-to-day -day life? Sometimes I do struggle with finding a balance, especially during school time. I am a very, very busy person. I always try to keep God first. I'm learning that it's okay to not meet 
every single thing you put down on your to-do list and don't try to become a perfectionist is going to leave you empty-handed to find that balance you should practice time management staying off of social media can really help you find a balance in life if you're on social media and scrolling all the time you're wasting like a good part of your day when you wake up spend time with god and when you're spending time with god and incorporating him first in the day it allows you to be more productive it allows me to just walk in the spirit throughout the day not worry all the time i'm praying then i could like do my work take breaks make me time always spend time with family the same thing with friends and having a social life if you're that type of person that incorporates to-do lists or charts or spreadsheets definitely incorporate those i like to write everything down or most things down on the calendar so I see things and I can plan accordingly. If you're into content creation, just don't get to the point where you're involved in hustle culture because you're going to find yourself creating content to the point where you're going to burn yourself out. You don't want to get caught up in doing so much works and doing so much ministry that you lose sight on Jesus Christ and you don't seek his face and you don't get to know him. Don't beat yourself up. Those were the unanonymous questions and now we're gonna get into the anonymous questions. How big of a nerd are you from one to 10? I guess it just depends on what subject or thing I'm knowledgeable about. But if it comes to like knowledge on like celebrities or certain things, maybe I could be like a five out of 10. But I guess in general, I don't know if I would consider myself a nerd. And when it comes to sports, your girl is probably like a two out of 10. How old do you want to be when you get married? Anywhere from like my late 20s to early 30s. I think my 20s is a time for like exploring adulthood and just having fun and being careful with the way you have fun and just growing. That's your first decade of just actually like not being a teenager and not being a kid and experiencing adulthood. I want to get married after I'm with somebody for a good amount of time. A decent man of God who doesn't talk the talk but walks the Christian walk and I'm financially stable and I've been in my career for a few years and I'm like actually established and just doing the things I love and I'm more spiritually mature. How old are you? I am 21 years old. Any words of encouragement? You're fearfully and wonderfully made. You are worth dying for. That's what Jesus Christ said and that's what he did. He died on the cross for you and for me and always try to make that personal. You are unique and you are different in a good way. Do not think that if you mess up, you're a failure. Don't beat yourself up. Don't compare yourself to other people. You're not more than anyone and you're not less than anyone. Um, and you're going to do great things if you put God first, seek him and go in that super place and develop a very intimate relationship with him. Always try to live in the present because if you get too caught up in nostalgia and get too caught up living in the past then you're gonna miss out on the present you're living the dreams you prayed for in the past don't be so anxious for the future because once the future comes then you're gonna look back on the past which is the present right now and you're gonna be like man why did i do that or why did i wish that so just take things one day at a time. A goal you've met this year. I got my wisdom teeth taken out. Let's give your girl a round of applause. And I'm so blessed. I'm so happy because they were giving me pain. When was your first kiss? The bigger question is when was your first kiss? Are you really 411 heard from someone you were? No. <laughs> Okay, no, I'm not 4'11", I'm 5'7". What is your biggest regret? I'm not the type of person now where I'm like, okay, well, every bad thing I've done, I'm gonna be like, dang, why did I do that? I try to look at that as an opportunity to grow. Something that could be added onto my testimony. I know that my testimony is always getting updated and the painful experiences that I've gone through in the past and the pruning that God has done can help me just testify of his goodness and show that I'm a living testimony and I made it out. He got me through. The messing comes before the blessing. Failure comes before success. My experiences can help somebody else whenever they're going through a test. My experiences and my testimony can be very similar to somebody else's testimony. I've never made that choice and I never would have learned this or I never would have 
gain spiritual maturity or insight in this area. And God probably wouldn't have dealt with me based on that situation because I didn't do that. Okay, I'm using this as a lesson to learn and to help me for the future. What's your favorite sport? I really love bowling. What is something you think God wants me to hear right now? I don't know what God wants you to hear right now. I think the best thing to do and the best way for you to find out what God wants to tell you is for you to find out yourself. One of the most valuable lessons is to find out for yourself. There's going to be so many people that are going to tell you things. So many prophets are going to prophesy things over your life. You got to go and test every spirit. Find out for yourself. Go to God and see what he says. Matthew 6 verse 33 says that we have to seek first the kingdom of God. Matthew 6 verse 6 talks about the secret place. That's where Jesus lives. He's literally inviting us to where he dwells. When you spend time with Jesus and get to have that intimate relationship with him and get to know him, you're going to know what he tells you. Why always find out something from a prophet when you could literally like go to Jesus Christ yourself? The elders, the pastors, the other people in the body of Christ, they're not going to be available all the time. They got to eat, spend time with family. They got to sleep. With Jesus Christ, he's always talking to you 24-7. He's always available. You can go to him in the secret place anytime, any day anywhere if you want to hear what the lord is telling you you got to go in that secret place and you got to seek his face you got to humble yourself deny yourself don't deny him because he will tell you things that he might not tell a prophet to tell you is it true is it false can you speak Chinese? I knew a bit of Mandarin. It would be good for evangelism though. Are you an introvert or extrovert? Yeah, I'm an introvert. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling blessed. I'm glad that I have the opportunity to talk to you guys and have this YouTube channel on this platform. Would you ever dye your hair a crazy color? It depends on what you consider as crazy. What I consider crazy, for me personally, or just something I would probably never do is dye my hair green or blue or purple. And it's no hate to anybody who does those colors. It's just not something I would like or something I would do as of right now. I would want to dye my hair blonde, like a light blonde. Favorite childhood memory. I really love the time where my mother and I visited my late aunt and uncle in their Florida condos. There was one time where I went in fourth grade and another time in seventh grade. Greatest challenge you overcame as a Christian. I don't even know if I could say this is the greatest challenge, but this is definitely one of them. Being able to deal with religious or legalistic Christians. As a person who's part of the body of Christ, I would think, you know, everybody who says they're a Christian and advertises or promotes Christ on social media is really sold out for him. But 90% of the time, that's not even the case. You will find a lot of people promote Jesus Christ and not live for him or promote him and actually live for him or get so caught up in the works that they don't um, have the intimate relationship with him. And they think they're representing Christ, but in reality, they're not. Because when you get so caught up in practicing religion, you end up having the spirit of religion that causes people to just end up in chaos and try to divide the body of Christ and cause discord. And that stuff comes from the enemy. When you have the spirit of religion, you're judging other Christians, you're attacking them while you call yourself a Christian and you're operating in rebellion and wickedness. You're persecuting Christ. And I think a lot about um, Pharisees and how they treated Jesus Christ. And I think when you persecute Christians like you persecute Christ, it reminds me a lot about how Christ um, confronted Saul on the road to Damascus about how he was persecuting God's people. It could cause you to deal with church hurt, but knowing how to still love them and deal with them, I feel like that's one of like the greatest challenges that like I overcame. Do you think the moon landing was real or faked? Okay, so I know there's some Christians that don't believe in NASA. I think the company's real. <laughs> I think the moon is real. 
Do I think people actually went to space? I have absolutely no idea. When it comes to education in America, they teach a lot about Europe, the Soviet Union, or Russia, and America. They always leave out other narratives. I did a project on the short film called Afronauts, and it talks about the largely undocumented part of the space race in Zambia. I think that people probably did prepare to go to space, but I don't know if they actually landed on there or if people are going to plan on going to Mars. To answer that, I don't know. I don't know. What's the worst date you've ever been on? So to be honest, are you traveling anywhere soon? I think this summer I'm going to go somewhere more south. It just depends on like my whole schedule. What's your number one song on Spotify? Hold on, let me check. Lay Down by Tripoli. Another song I love is Walking in Peace by Alex Jean. Who's your last snap from? I deactivated Snapchat in 2021, so I don't have it. How many selfies do you take a day? So I don't take selfies every single day. There are times where I'll take like two to 16 selfies. I'll look back at them and delete majority of them and end up with like an average of like two to four. But I wouldn't say that's like every day though. Should I be honest with you on here? Yes, you should. You shouldn't lie. You should never lie. Hey, beautiful. You inspire me to pursue my purpose and be bold about the gifts God has given me. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you very much. And I'm so glad that I inspire people. Most embarrassing thing you've done. There's a few embarrassing things, but one of the most embarrassing thing I've done, I was in my seventh grade drama class. I chose not to practice at home and memorize my lines. So I was making up my lines on the spot doing improv. And then I would forget some of my lines. They would always correct me on the lines that I missed it because like I never knew any of my lines. So they were like, no, wrong line, wrong line. And I just made them up. It got to the point where I kept saying line, 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 line. And somebody who was reading my lines to make sure I wasn't messing up and memorize them was just like, no, wrong, no, wrong. And I was doing it in front of this one guy that I used to like at the time. And like some people were grading me. So he ended up giving me like, probably a bad score so that was really embarrassing and then my drama teacher had to talk to my mom about it during parent teacher conference so that's a lesson to learn like when somebody says do your homework you do your homework don't embarrass yourself because you will get caught have you ever been fired from a job no i haven't shout me out i don't even know who you are but whoever you are if you're watching this i'm shouting you out your favorite hobby i really love to edit last thing that you googled okay <laughs> the last thing that i googled was how come no one responds to me in group chats because i, <laughs> I sent something to a group chat and i was just like wait nobody's gonna respond they responded and i was just like bro Jania, you didn't even have to do that you you really didn't even <laughs> you didn't even have to search that up but I feel like we've all had those moments where we're like, dang, nobody's responding. Why? But people are busy. The worst pickup line you've ever heard. Are you a 10? Because you're the only 10 I see. Like, come on now. Be for real. Be for real. Are you serious? Is heaven real? It's definitely real. There's going to be no pain, no sorrow, no suffering, no demons, no religious, legalistic people or christians it's just gonna be us praising him up there all the time like forever there's gonna be beautiful animals and creatures streets of gold we're not gonna be hungry we're not gonna be tired we're gonna see people we know it's just gonna be rejoicing working for the lord praising the lord heaven's just gonna be awesome would you leave your significant other for a celeb i would never leave my significant other for a celeb and even if I was dating somebody who was a celeb, I wouldn't leave him for another celeb. Okay, so that's it for the Q&A. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications. And if you want to accept the Lord as your Lord and Savior, read the description box down below. I love you all, and God loves you too. So don't forget to follow me on Instagram at I am Janiya Sanders. Bye!